Welcome to the Home Ownership Podcast presented by Momentum Realty, located in Hanover, Massachusetts. This series covers all things real estate and the best practices for buying, selling, and owning properties. Now here's your host, Sean Maloney. Welcome to episode 107, Now or Later, When to List. I'm your host, Sean Patrick Maloney. Thanks for joining me this week. This week, I want to talk to you about when to list, now or later, the constant argument we have, spring market, summer market, fix it, sell it as is, supply and demand, growth, interest rates, factors, so many different ones. Let's break it down here this week and talk about why you should list your house, when you should list your house, and how your house is an individual unit that should be looked at as such always. Not just looking at it as a house and that every market is the same and that every house fits in every market. Let's talk about it. Let's break it down here this week. First off, which season is best to list as a general statement? It's not paying attention to supply, demand, or the property you're selling. Those are the first two we need to break down. So supply and demand. What is supply and demand? We all learned it in early years in school middle school, sometimes high school, possibly even college if you're a business major, but supply and demand just generally states when you have more people that have money for a product than you have supply, people are going to be willing to pay more for it. This is like a concert ticket, how the price can continue to increase just because there's not enough seats in the stadium for as many guests as want to visit. If that demand goes down and they have empty seats, the supply is suddenly up, which means in the supply and demand world, when the supply is up, the price is going to go down. So this means that when your concert isn't very popular, it's going to cost less to go to it. Same thing happens in the housing market. When we have lots of houses on the market, if I'm a buyer and I'm looking at $400,000 price range and there's 20 houses in that market and they're not moving very quickly and I see, okay, I have 20 different choices, I get to make a choice. But if I take that same market, flip it on its head, and I put one house on the market, I have the only house. I walk into the open house, and there's 10 people in there. I immediately know I'm either going to put in a very competitive bid or I'm not going to get it. Why? Because of the rules of supply and demand. I know that there's only one house here, and it's the only piece of supply we have, and the demand is through the roof. Supply and demand can rule everything. That's why right now a lot of people, they're waiting for spring market to get the highest numbers, But is it always true? No, not necessarily, because supply and demand can create anomalies. Sometimes being on the market alone can result in fierce competition, which can lead to higher offers. We'll talk about some of the risks of that later on in this episode. But for now, let's remember that if the supply is low and demand is high, prices are going to be good. So next up, your house. Your house is an individual unit. My house sits on a lake. It has a beach out front. Would I be better to sell it in spring, summer, or fall, or winter? I would say late winter, early spring, or late spring, early summer may be great times. Showcase it late spring, early summer with the boat out front, the docks out, the beach nice, towels all set up, people envisioning the dream, thinking about it, hey, I got a few weeks left of this year. Or late winter, early spring, okay, I could see what I could do here. I couldn't wait to have the whole summer here and I'm willing to pay more because I'm going to get it for the entire summer. Or maybe you have a ski place where it's up in the north and during the summertime you're out there with all the other people that are trying to sell them before next year. Maybe you're better off to sell as the first snow flies. Maybe you're better off to plan your sale to when other people aren't selling. So again, your supply and demand is up. You have to look at each unique circumstance, each unique house, and see what outlying factors could overall affect pricing. Some places that would be you know, important to remember is heavy tourist locations. So maybe the tourists are going to bring you the most money. You're in a marsh field, you're down there by Brant Rock, and you're trying to sell it to seasonal rental people. You want to let them see it. Why? Because that person just paid you two or 3000 maybe even more, a week to rent the house. You know they're seeing the cash cow. You know they think you're a rich investor and that they you just don't everything so selling it to them while they're in that liquid dream while they're in that vacation mode while they're in that finding their new reality of my staycation home away from home whatever you want to call it that person's willing to pay a lot for it so putting it into the right marketplace at the right time for the right people is everything next up do i fix it or do i sell it as is the truth is, this question's best asked to a realtor, especially ones over here at Movementum Realty, what we call move mentors, because they're going to be able to tell you 
whether that dollar that you spend into the property is going to get you a dollar back, 70 cents back, 20 cents back, or $10 back. We're going to tell you, are you going to get a return on your investment, which is key when you're going to be making decisions. Sometimes selling opportunity is great. Other times selling opportunity is terrible. I can tell you currently in the seller's market that we're in, quite often right now, the answer is do nothing and enjoy the fact that people are going to pay you too much for nothing. Sometimes when the market's very slow, do everything because you can't sell a property unless it has everything done. But that said, I just created a rule and now I'm going to break it. What about in this market? You have a house that's close to done. Finish the entire thing because people love all the way finished houses. What if you have a house that's all the way totaled? Sell it as a total because people love rebuilding houses. We have to know what we have and market it correctly because if we don't know what we have, we don't market it correctly, we can end up risking trying to market it based on general rules and anomalies and we can get ourselves in big trouble when it comes to the price. So what are some other things when people say list it now or later? One of them would be, I don't have a house to go to. So let's talk about it. Suitable housing clauses, what are they? So a suitable housing clause says as a seller, in order to sell my house, I have to find suitable housing. So you're able to put your house on the market and you're able to shop at the same time with the contingency saying that you must close upon that other home before you leave your home, not risking becoming homeless in between by having that suitable housing clause. This is something that is very common in the marketplace right now because ultimately not many people that are moving around can risk losing theirs and not have another house. Working again with Movementum Realty, we can better explain what a suitable housing clause is because a lot of people get confused as to what they're able to do and what a home sale contingency is, right? So they've heard that one, but not suitable housing clause. Well, they are each other in the inverse. Home sale contingency says in order to buy this new home that I'm buying, my buyer must perform. So we're saying to them, we're not just able to buy your home without knowing that our home is sold. So both times we have one where we're saying we're not able to sell it unless it's sold. The other one we're saying we're not able to buy it unless it's sold. Overall, this means that whole question of whether I should sell now or later is up to what you really want to accomplish. Ultimately, some of the times that it's best to sell is to keep, maybe you have kids, you're trying to get them into the school year, maybe you have a job change, you're trying to do it by a date. So not always does it align with when, say, the market is quote unquote perfect. But the truth is, it's all about playing the market that you have and understanding how to work within that marketplace that you're within. The idea of the old days, spring market, summer market, fall market, winter market had a lot to do with the sick nature of real estate but I can tell you that with the world changing it's rapidly accelerating that people move 365 I also would say that since I got into real estate even just the short 13 years ago everything from snowplow technologies to rock salt to all that has led the world to a much busier place year-round internet-based technologies online home touring all these different things have filled in the gaps of going through snowbanks to see houses we are starting to see a universal market where people are moving not only just from Boston to Boston, but they're moving Boston to Austin. They're moving Austin to San Diego. They're moving San Diego to Naples. They're moving all over the place at any given time. Why? Because work, because of different schools, because of different startup ideas of where they want to restart their life, these TV shows that show you island life for all these other things. I even have a brother that lives down in St. Croix in the U.S. Virgin Islands. Why? He always wanted to live island life. Probably would have never even thought about it if there wasn't a such thing as a television show on island life. But now that we have this, people have realized I don't have roots. I am not a tree. I have roots to my family, but those roots can move with me without any trouble. It's not like back in the day where suddenly I have an issue because, oh my God, I don't have any of my network. I can't talk with them. We have the cell phone. We have FaceTime. We have the ability to talk on social medias. We have the ability to fly places for very, very, very cheap prices compared to when I was younger. We have the ability to drive our cars faster than ever. We are moving around at the speed of light and so isn't the market. One of the key things to remember for understanding entering the market and when the right time to list is, is to get a real estate agent involved, to get somebody that's a realtor, to get somebody that also is a move mentor, which means they work for Movementum Realty, so that 
they can guide you through the process and not push you, but tell you, okay, this is the right time to enter the market and here's the reasons why and here's how we're going to maximize your listing to ensure you get the most views on it, to make sure that you get the most money, the best terms possible, no matter the marketplace. While we can't guarantee the market to always stay high, I can tell you that the market is very high right now. If you're looking to sell your home, please reach out to us over here at Movementum Realty. We would love to connect you with one of our Move Mentors and Realtors. That way there, they can tell you what's best, where to spend money, where not to spend money, when to come on the market and how we can get you the most money in the best terms possible. If you haven't already done so, make sure to hit the subscribe button. Tell your friends and family about it. We love giving out information on how to buy, sell, and own homes. Check out our podcast. Check out our newsletter, our weekly blog, as well as all the other information we put out on our website, movementumrealty.com. Thank you so much for listening, and I look forward to talking to you next week.